So recently I was going through the stack of ever-growing small stick stoves that I have and I pulled out two that I've done videos on before and I looked at them and I thought this is interesting. What if I take the vegetable steamer stove and the Lixata Little Bug Inspired stove and combine them? Wonder how well that would work. If you're interested in finding out, let's do that. So I've not actually tried this before, but I think it's something that has some real benefits going. So let's just go back over the two stoves for a second. So when I first made the videos using the vegetable steamer stove, um, it had a lot of advantages going for it. You know, you could open it right up into a large fire bowl like this. You could close it up part of the way, kind of force or concentrate the flames upwards. The only problem really that this stove had was the fact that it lacked a great something to set a pot on and I did use start using a trivet in one of the videos and I still use the trivet with this stove but it's uh, it's not that it's less than ideal it, it works just fine and I, and people have come up with all kinds of suggestions for me and I, they're all good for that for that matter things like putting skewers through some of these holes uh, you know different ones like that I haven't found anything that actually works better than the one that I came up with which was the trivet with the bent over legs a tripod, yes, that would work as well, but it, you know, it's a whole lot easier if you can just set it down on top of something. Well, so that was the benefits or the pros and cons to this little stove. Still very good stove, very inexpensive. Uh, this one, no, the, well, the price tag's obviously burnt off of this one. I have another one I'm going to be showing you in a second, and, the, and I'll tell you why. This one I just paid a dollar ninety-nine for at uh, Value Village, our thrift store. So put that aside. Now, when I did the review on this little stove, uh, it functioned incredibly well. The tall nature of it, the airflow, the simplicity of it, it drew air up through it and you know, there was a lot of flame. The downside, there's no bottom in it. So, you know, you had to put it on top of something. And uh, that day when I was out in the woods last winter, I put it on top of a, f a couple of sticks to kind of give it a base, just not, not to protect the ground. I'm not worried about the ground because the ground is frozen solid and soaking wet on top of that right now, but more just to keep the cold air out of the, out of the fire. But that was the downside of it. Other than that, it packs down extremely small. It work, it's extremely light. And, you know, when you don't want to use it as a stove, you use it as a windscreen. You just set an alcohol stove down inside and, you know, it works as long as your pot's not too big. It works perfectly as a windscreen. But it occurred to me, if I take the two of them and put them together, I'm kind of combining the best features of both stoves. Find some level ground here. Combining the best features of both stoves and kind of overcoming both of their faults or their, both of their downsides. So now my vegetable steamer stove has a pot rest on top and you'll recall that this pot rest can be turned upside down, probably how I'm gonna use it today and you'll see why, a little bit of wind around me here. So now I have a pot stand. I can use the smallest pot to the largest pot. It also creates more height, more of that chimney effect. So I expect that I am going to get some good airflow through the top of this thing because of that. And now I have a bottom for my stove. So now the, the bottom is up off the ground with good airflow underneath. Now, that's the setup I'm going to use, but I wanted to show you one other setup because uh, this is another option. This is the larger size vegetable steamer but you can get them in some pretty small sizes probably even smaller than this and what I liked about this one is if I open it up part of the way this sits down on top of it just perfectly I mean it it's almost like you would think this was made for each other it sits over the top and down inside to see if I can show you the inside I can probably open up the inside of one not much more than that though Especially for pellets, I think this would be a really, really great setup for pellets because the, the pellets are all off the ground, they've got lots of airflow, they've kind of got, because of the leaves of the vegetable steamer are turned in a little bit, they get uh, kind of focused their flame. And the air holes around the outside of the Little Bug Inspired stove add extra oxygen for the updraft. I think this would be an especially good setup for wood pellets, but also for wood, but I am going to use the larger one today. So. If you have one of these and you've been wondering what you could do to create a nice base, buy yourself one of these vegetable steamers at the dollar store or at the thrift store like I do and combine them together and I think it'll work out quite well. However, I haven't done it, so let's do it now for the first time. So I'm going to take a minute to get a bit of a fire leg going in the bottom of this thing with some rather crappy materials from around here, some birch bark. 
And I am going to make it a little easier on myself for this one. I'm going to use a fire starter and a Bic lighter. Heaven forbid, I know. But, let's see. I will probably edit some of this down for, for time, but I'm using one of the great little fire plugs from Ultimate Fire Technologies. Things that are really, really good. I can probably break up my sticks first, though. This is just dead branches from underneath the, the pines, or not pines, sorry, the spruce where I'm at right now. Dead and kind of dry, probably the best way to say it. And I have some larger ones stacked up beside me here that I can break down as once I get the little fire going. And when I do, I'm going to put some water on for lunch. All right, but first let's see how this thing works. There we go, that's better. A little slow here. But I gotta get a bit of wood in here quickly. Actually, I'm gonna put the pot stand on now before I can't. There we go. Start feeding in my sticks. It is going well down the side there. A lot of dampness. Okay, now we're starting to take off a little bit. Well, that's catching on. Get my pot out. I am gonna have to collect up a little bit of snow to melt to heat my lunch up with, but it's gonna be a minute before that uh, is ready for it. So what I'll do is I'll cut away for a couple of minutes while that fire catches on and before I put the pot of water on I will uh, show you how well it's working. It's taking off now. It's great. All right. Look at that airflow. Isn't that amazing? Oh. Yeah, so this is the first time I put these two stoves together but I can tell you it won't be the last time. It overcomes the two small shortcomings of each of them and actually create something that was better than either of them was before. So the airflow is just incredible. I was able to flip the pot stand up, upright so that it stands at the higher height because I think I need that. I'm putting a bush pot on it. This is full of snow with a little bit of water in the bottom. Oh yeah, okay. That's exactly what I wanted to see. No, uh, no dampening down of the flames, so lots of flames. The downside of this, of course, as you can see, is some of the wind is robbing away flames there. I don't have a windscreen. I'm kind of behind a log, but uh, I should have had a little bit of a fire pit or something I could put in for a windscreen. Even so, flame is feeding up nice and high. There's a lot of force. It's like a, almost like a small rocket stove, except I'm going to have to be feeding it through the top, which I'm going to have to continue to do while this is heating and melting my snow and then I'll get my lunch on in the pot and uh, once that's done we'll come back and uh, talk about it a little bit more. So that worked out well. Actually I think a little bit better than expected. I had inspected some good combination of performance but man it was it was like a rocket stove the way it was drafting up through the bottom in through the holes around the base of the Luxata little bug inspired stove. Yeah, that worked out well. I said this was the first time I was going to use this, and I said it's not the last time, and that's true. I can see myself using this quite often. I think the next thing I'll do was combine, will be to combine the little bug-inspired stove from Luxata with the smaller vegetable steamer and some wood pellets to see how well that works out. You know, that's the fun part about doing DIY projects. You not only save money, 
uh, you come up with some pretty interesting things that work sometimes better than expected. Speaking of DIY or homemade, what do you think of my hat? Made from a wool blanket. Upcoming video on that, if you're interested, keep watching. But in the meantime, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.